service I'm happy to be here it's nice to see you I want you to come here when you come to the house of the Lord just like I do I, I always put a demand I would say father um, I've been serving you so many years but I want to I want to encounter something new with you the good thing about God he's, he's a God of seasons he's a God of time and if you ask him he will bring something new in your life amen we can't be in the set in the church for 20 years, sitting in the same seat for 20 years. You seen that? People sit in the same place in the same chair for 20 years, and like, wait, wait, let's let's change the angle. If I sit this side, let me change. Let me sit this this year. Let me sit in the other side of the church. But the thing is, we create a routine in our lives. We used to do the same thing, and the thing is, we we just so. We, we like a robot. Okay, I wake up in the morning. I got to go to work. I got to do this. I got to do that. And what's wrong? We need to change some areas in our life that we need, we need to demand. We need, sometimes we're so busy, we forget what God wants to do with us. Because personally, myself, slavery is still here. Because if you don't work, you're not going to have a roof. You're not going to have the things that you have. And I like when people talk about the American dream. I think with eight hours, it's not enough to live the American dream. I work like 15 hours a day just to maintain what I have. And sometimes we get so tired because our life is a routine. Just work, 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 work. And sometimes we cut the time from God. Amen. That's not part of the preaching today, actually. And it's funny because the, the, the word today is maintaining the revival. Last week, who was here last weekend? There was a revival. But what happened today? We needed to wait for an event so we can shout out and acting like, whoa, I want something new. Is Sunday in enough or we have to wait for three day in event to be wow, to be, to step in the front, to receive what God wants for you? If I ask a question this morning, who is waiting a revival? There's a lot of people that are going to raise their hands. But let me tell you something. God is saying, why are you waiting for a revival? Is the revival, it's in you. It's in you. I'm expecting a revival. And God said, I don't know. That revival is in you. A revival is an increase. You need to increase, force yourself to be in that revival. So we waiting for a revival. We waiting. We think of arrival, screaming, shouting, running. Revival is an experience with God that you go up to the new level of glory with Him. And God, I'm going to church, Father, because I want to feel you. God said, "What in church? What about at home?" And then, and 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 we 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 always waiting to God to do something, and God is saying, "No, I already done enough. What are you gonna do?" What are you going to do? I've been here the whole time. Lord, I'm waiting for you. What are you talking about? I've been in you. <laughs> so we expect God, and, 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 and I ask everybody lift up your hands. Yeah, I'm waiting for a revival. And the Lord said, what do you mean you waiting? My revival is already here. And that university, we don't need a big crowd. We don't need hundreds of people. We don't need thousands of people to, to experiment a revival. And that university started with five people started. And then the revival started going because you know what they did? They increased. They didn't give up. The service is done. No, I'm staying. And they start, and they start worshiping, and they say, Father, because you know why? During the service, they had a revival, and they kept that revival. No, I'm going to leave the revival in the building. I'm going home. Oh, my God. There's a revival at church. Has to be a revival at home. Has to be a revival at work. Has to be a revival everywhere you go. What are you waiting for? I'm waiting to go to church to see God. What? This is a building. A building where we fellowship, where we come, where we gather, where we see with brothers and sisters. But the real church is ourself. We are the ones that have to move the church in the revival. The Lord is manifesting everywhere. And the Lord is taking things in his own hands. Look at what happened with Brazil. 
they start marking Jesus. They start dragging Jesus. Who's seen that? They did a parade. What happened the next day? A flood. The guy that was playing the devil, he died the next day in a car accident. There's no more games. There's no time to mock Jesus. God is tired of us. And the way that we are moving our faith and we're forgetting that he is this. I'm not even going to my notes. Oh my God. I need to go there. The church, what are we waiting for? Huh? We come to church. Oh, the church is empty. Oh, I don't know. I see the church full right now. There's many angels here. There's many angels here worshiping with us. The Bible says when there's two or what? There's two right here. Who's the rest? And that's what God wants to speak to you today. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting to provoke the Lord? He has provoked you many, many times. He has been there for you many, many times. And we keep waiting. God, where you at? Where you at? The Lord said, I've just been here. But you've been so busy. You have, because the only way you connect with me is through prayer. Because you're not praying. You ain't hearing me. That's why you don't feel that revival. Oh, they did this to me. Think about you fall always in the same thing. That's why there's a wall in front of you. You have to overcome that wall. Not that you don't go over it. The thing is you go over that wall. You go back and go over the wall again. You have to demolish that wall. You have to kick that wall. You got to put it down. Whatever stronghold it is, don't pass it. Don't go over it. Destroy it. And that's what the Lord is telling you this morning. You need to destroy what's holding you back to that revival that it's in you in you i say in you it's all about increasing what god wants to do with you let's give a hand to the lord let me go into my notes there you go so keeping a a revival the revival in your spirit and revival comes from the spirit you have your soul but if your spirit is not connected to the presence of God, what is it? It's your soul only. And it's your flesh that is fighting because we want to have an emotional revival. Hey, hey, listen carefully. <laughs> and we confuse emotion from the Holy Spirit because we can't identify it. We don't know how to identify if it's an emotion or if it's the spirit of God. Sometimes when you connect with the Holy Spirit of God, you recognize where God knows I'm being too emotional in this area. I'm not talking about, yeah, with the presence of God, we cry, we bow down, we break ourselves because we're feeling that the Spirit of God is on us. But sometimes we let our emotions take control of us and it's holding back what God wants to do with you. What God wants to do with my wife is totally different than what he wants to do with me. She's been with me 28 years. And those 28 years, God has dealt with her in a different way that God has dealt with me. She has been looking for her revival. I've been looking for my revival. And I don't tell her, oh, I'm, I'm the only one praying. If you connect with me, uh, because if you're not praying, I'm not receiving what God wants to give me. And it's all, your relationship with God is all individual with him gotta know it's personal you gotta take it personal don't take it like a doctor's appointment don't take it like okay i need to go to the presence of god no you have to be in the presence of god so you can see it amen and it says let's let's go to psalms 51 10 and 12. let's read this and i love this bible verse. say create in me a clean what oh come on you guys i know it's it's it's, it's an hour or less that we slept let's do it again Create in me a clean one. Oh my God, there's so many things that we have in our hearts. So many things. There might be somebody here when what I do, they grew up with a father. Somebody, your best friend, betray you. Somebody's going through a divorce. You're hating your boss. We always have trouble with our bosses, but it's, it's part of the job. But 
We have to have a clean heart, oh God. And, and, and what did it say? And what? Renew. So we, we, we knew you have to ask the Father, make me new in the inside. Give me a new heart. Change the way that I think. Not pick up my mind. You tell the Lord, align my mind. You need to align yourself. The thing is that we always cry out, oh, oh, God, God, I said, God, God said, I already heard you. What are we going to do now? Because it's, 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 it's like, it's nice to go to the Lord and pray, but every time we pray, it's like a, a cry out. Oh, I'm going through this. Oh, God. And the Lord said, yeah, okay, I know, I know. Worship me. Believe me, trust me. Maintain that revival. The Lord knows what you're going through. Sometimes we repeat and repeat ourselves to him and tell him and tell him. And the Lord said, he told me last night. I know. He told me a couple seconds ago. But the Lord is telling you this morning, what are we going to do about it? What are you going to do about what you're going through? negative things out of your mouth because you're tired. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of carrying. God said, you know what? You need a clean heart. And the only way you're going to have a clean heart when you surrender, when you give it to him, when you go through a breakthrough and you say, Father, it's going out of my mind. I'm not going to even think about it. The thing is you start thinking about it and it starts going to your heart. When it goes into your heart, it starts to contaminate you and it contaminates your soul. It contaminates your spirit. It contaminates your life. And then you frustrate it and then you get out of the path and you lost so the Lord is telling you this morning reposition yourself and the Lord is telling you face me don't face your problems don't face your past we turn around we go look sideways and we get so distracted and the Lord says just face me and believe in me and that's what God wants you to do what it said the next word how you say that? Steed fast? Stays fast. Spirit within me. And that spirit, that spirit, I like when there's a connection with the Holy Spirit with you. There's the other one. Let's keep reading. Number 11. Number 11. Come on. Let's go. Do not cast me away from your presence. He said, do not cast me away from your presence. How we cast away from his presence? When we stop believing we need to rely to others with our relationship with God. When you only wait for a Sunday to come to church and say, Lord, this is, I'm going I'm to go visit you. You don't need to come here to visit God. When you visit, it's temporary. When you have it in him, he's always with you. You understand what I'm saying? When you go to the family member, you visit him one time a year. So you're telling God, I'm waiting for Sunday to go visit the Lord. The Lord said, what do you mean? I'm not over there. I'm here with you. And it says, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. When it says Holy Spirit, do not take your guidance. Do not take your love. Do not take your passion. Do not take the supernatural. Do not take anything from me. But Father, I ask you for forgiveness because sometimes I drift myself away you because I think about other stuff because I get too worried because I got lack of faith and I forget who you are. I forget who you are. I forget who you are. But in this day, Father, I gather myself I align myself to the Spirit of God. The thing is, we have to learn how to express ourselves to the Lord. Why are you scared to speak to Him? I'm going to tell the Lord, and you never tell Him. It's all in your mind. That you have to sit down and say, Lord, this is what it is. This is what it is. I came this morning, I went to the prayer room, and I sat there. I said, Lord, this is what it is. I'm about to step in your altar. And I want to give everything, whatever it's in me that needs to be, I don't want to step in that altar with something in my heart. And I make sure when I step into that altar, I go to a secret place, and I'm all week praying, and I say, Lord, I'm going to step into your altar. And I want you to just, we always need deliverance daily. I say, Lord, just 
remove anything you need to remove before I step up in there. Because you know why, Father? I know your glory, your fire is in this place. And, 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 and I don't tell them, just remove me. No, no, Father, use me. And the way that you, that you use me, this instrument needs to be clean. See, you see the musician, they always clean their guitars, they're cleaning their stuff. You know why? Because they care about the instrument. The same way the Father wants to clean us, He wants to maintain us shiny. He wants to shine you. He wants you to look yourself bright. So when people see you, there's something going on with you, Pastor Dave. Oh man, you shiny, you bright. Yeah, because you just got engaged. <laughs> But that's what it is. When you have an event in your life that it's, it, it's God's plan and something happens, there's an expression in you, the way you walk, the way you speak, the way you come to others, the way you embrace. It's beautiful. Do you been in a situation that for some reason somebody just stopped talking to you without doing nothing? You know, I like that situation, Pastor. When people stop talking to me, I love it. You know what I do? Hey, God bless you. And they're like, I'm like, for no reason. Maybe because I'm bald and they, they, they're jealous because they're bald. This is my brother here, my bald brother. But for no reason, just people just stop talking to you. And you know, Lord. And then you're like, forgive me. Mama. And then you start going back. What I said? What I said? And sometimes you don't even do nothing because there's jealousy, there's envy, there's so much things around. If you have a door open, that's going to captivate you and it's going to start changing your mind. And then when you see the person, you just stop talking to him. Where's the presence there? You know how many times we have betrayed God and God have not stopped talking to us? And when we go down on our knees and we say, Father, sorry. When you go to God and you tell him you're sorry, he said, I forgave you days ago. The Lord tells you, I forgave you days ago. But this is the moment that we have to keep and maintain that revival. Amen. Can I, can I hear me here in the monitors a little bit? There you go. So where's the other one? Wait, wait, let's go to 12. I'm still in the beginning of this. What time is it? Oh, I got time. Look. I'm sweating. I'm always sweating. Check this out. That's the 12th, right? What, what's the first word? Oh, what's the first word? Who you asked to restore you? Listen carefully. There's things in life like a car. I can't paint a car. I can't restore a car. Sometimes you can't restore the things yourself. And you got to take it to a specialist, right? The only one that can restore you is the Lord. He's the only one. You try to do it to yourself, you try to restore yourself without the help of God, I'll give you a day that you will fall back. So I say, restore to me the what? The joy. Come on, guys. I need to hear the what? Ah, the joy. The what? There you go. Restore the joy of your what? Salvation. And then hold me by your generous spirit. Oh, I love. Restore. Say, tell the Father this morning, restore. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, restore me. Say, restore my spirit. Restore my soul. Restore my life. The thing is, we are so focused that we ask God, restore my finances, restore my job. And the Lord said, yeah, I want to restore that, but you haven't restored nothing with me. <laughs> so that's what the Lord wants to do you today. He wants to tell you, I am revival, and my revival will only manifest through you. I've never seen a revival without no people. Oh, we're going to walk into this building. There's a revival. There's nothing moving on. Because the Lord has created you to manifest his glory, to manifest his revival, to manifest his love, to manifest his compassion, to manifest whatever you do. He needs you to manifest, to expand his kingdom. He needs you. What are we waiting for? 
And the thing is, we keep being sorry to ourselves. It's 2023, you're still talking about 2018. The worst year, you have a worst year. I know what it is. I have my worst year, 2019, pure hell. Mama, remember 2019? 2019 was the worst year that since we've been serving the Lord. It was hard. I cried. And I said, Lord, what's going on? I don't want to do this anymore. You start, you start, you start blaming yourself in 2019. Oh my God. And I looked at my wife. Uh, Are we going to get out of this? And to the moment I looked at my wife, I said, well, honey, we need to let this go. We need to forgive. And the thing is, until you don't forgive, you won't see that revival in you. You need to start forgiving the person that hurt you or the person that you hurt. Because we, we, we hurt people too, the things that we say. And in 2019, when I looked at my wife, I said, you know, honey, it's been a hard year. But when I look back, 20, 21, when we bought our house in 20 and 20, God gave us a house. And things start going on. My daughter graduated to university. My daughter lives in New York. My daughter is doing great. Every state started moving in the past because we forgave the person, the people that hurt us or whatever we went through. I had a church in Ocala. I had to give it away. And that was the biggest pain that I had. And I was, I was blaming myself. What I did wrong, Father. How I did something wrong. I lost what you gave me in your hands. You gave me my hands. I lost it. Until the Lord told me this, Pastor Dave. He said, you didn't lose it. The Lord told me what happened is when you opened the church, you were not sent the right way. You left to open a church because you were upset. Oh. And the Lord told me, I need you to go back to the beginning. And let me tell you something. He was there. He, he never, he always backed me up. The Lord was always there. And when I met this ministry and I started doing this ministry, I wanted a revival. I came here and I saw what was going on here. I'm like sitting there, whoa, this is powerful. And the Lord told me, you want that revival in your church? You need to go to your old pastor and you tell him you're sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to go over there. And the Holy Spirit told me he's going to say nasty stuff and you stay quiet. Went to that pastor. Oh my God. I love him till this day. He believed in me. And he told me, Oof. and I'm quiet there. I don't trust you. You betray me. And I'm like, yep, I did. All those stuff. And I gave him the hand. I said, God bless you. I still love you. Thank you because you were the first one that believed in me. And I walked out. And something awakened in my life. The ministry started having a revival. They start having pressures, but they got into the moment I got stuck in the ministry because I left the wrong way. I needed to start it the right way. And that's why I'm here in Orlando now. And I have experimented many, many revivals. I've been through many things. I have learned a lot of things, but this is my house. This is my church. Whatever happened, this is my place. I will fight for this church. I will fight anything. I will put my life for my apostle and my, my prophet. I will do anything. You know why? Because in the moment that I need someone, they were there for me. So never forget. Actually, this happened the other day. My brother called me. Listen carefully. He needed some money. And I said, here, um, pay me half and half. And I told him to pay me back the money. When I hanged up, the Holy Spirit said, really? Do you remember the times you, they were going to cut your electric bill and your brother help you? Oh, never forget. People always remember the bad stuff. They never remember the good stuff what people does for you. But when I hanged up, the Holy Spirit just slapped me in the face. Really? You're going to tell your brother to give you the money back? 
Do you remember when you called them, when you came to Ocala, and they want to cut your electric bill, and he gave you the money and never asked for it? And that's what I, ta- I called them back and said, hey, brother, forget about the money. What do you mean? And I straight up I said, remember this day? He said, yeah. I said, the Spirit put it in me. So if you have in your mind to help someone because you want to gain something for it, for your own benefits, ah, uh, it's not going to work. When you do it with your heart, and you say, God, this is my revival. This is my that I want to give to you. You'll see how God will bless you in many areas. Amen. Give a hand to the Lord. Man, I'm still in the beginning. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. So, I got to keep going. You will grow faith. What is it, the next one? No, that's the one. That's the one. They say, into your heart, soul, mind, and, 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 and it's your whole soul and mind is aligned. You will not, if you're not aligned, you will not receive revival in your spiritual life. Your mind needs to be aligned. Your soul, your spirit, everything has to be. Your body can't be going that way. Your soul can't be going that way. Your spirit can't go in that way. We all have to be aligned. Aligned, aligned is like up, up to the Lord. And it says revival is increased. You need to increase your relationship with your pastor. You need to increase your relationship with God. You need to increase your relationship with your brother. But the more important thing, you need to increase your relationship with God. You need to increase your prayer. You need to increase your fasting. You need to increase your reading. You need to increase and go down to your knees. Father, it's all about you. It's not about nothing else. When your life is aligned to God, God will do anything possible to take care of you. But you need to increase. Increase. It's like forcing. You stand in there. I really don't want to worship. I really don't want to lift up my hands. But you know what? I have to increase. I have to force my body. Father, oh, Roko, and start speaking in tongues. Don't worry. Just force yourself. Your biggest enemy is you. Your biggest enemy is your body. Your biggest enemy is your emotion. Your biggest enemy is you. It's not even the devil. He doesn't make you do things. He puts it in your mind. Hey, do this. We always try to blame someone, but we need to blame ourselves with our relationship with God. Stop blaming others for your relationship with God. Blame yourself because you walked away. Blame yourself because you stopped praying. Blame yourself because you being a Sunday person. Blame yourself because you're not in school. Blame yourself what God is telling you. You want my revival? My revival is in you. And the only way that revival will be manifest if you have increased my relationship with me. Man, for the past week, I have been feeling God. Okay, let's start. Why you don't feel God? You've been talking to him? No. You've been going to church? No. So that's why you don't feel God. Because you're totally in your flesh. You can't feel God in your flesh. The only way your flesh feels God is when the <laughs> The only, the only way when your flesh feels God and when your spirit is aligned to God in your soul. But God going straight to your flesh and forget about your soul and your spirit, that ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen. The same way the word. You can't go to the Father if you don't go through who? Through the Son. And going through the Son, you got to have the Holy Spirit first. Find Jesus. Jesus to God think you're going to jump the Holy Spirit, jump Jesus, and God say, hey, you need to go back. You forgot about Jesus. You need to go back. You forgot about the Holy Spirit. It's nice. We can pray direct to God, but you need the Spirit to be there. Come on. It's a combo. Where's my fries? I'm missing something. And the thing is, we always, we fo- it's very good to focus on God. He's the creator, Jesus. But we forget about what brings the revival? It's the Holy Spirit. When Jesus left, I will leave you my spirit. My th- the Holy Spirit is him. It's him. The Holy Spirit is three in him. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. The Holy Spirit is God. But the thing is, the Holy Spirit is the only one that's going to manifest here on earth. Because he left it here. What are you waiting for? Sounds like a movie. There's a movie that says that. What are you waiting for? God, Alex, Hades, what are you waiting for? No. Hey, you guys. Oh, that's Goonies. All right. 
<laughs> what is a spiritual revival? Come on, give me that other noise. That mm-hmm. let me see. Let me see if it gets it. There you go. I like that sound. You like that one? There you go. That's that's what I like. Okay. And this is what's a revival? What is a spiritual revival? I need to tell you. I've been talking about it, but I need to tell you what it is. Is a revival refers to a spiritual awakening in certain places. Look at this. You carry the revival in any place, a certain place. There's a moment, there's a crowd of people. There's a crowd of people like right now. We don't need the church full so revival can happen. Right now, we, 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 we expect it to have a revival this morning. Oh, nobody say amen. Thank you. I'll say amen myself. I'll get the revival for myself. So, so, so where does, where, where does the revival begin? Revival begins with us seeking God, God's presence with a broken heart and repentance with hearing for obedience to God's will. So I like it when they say it begins with, with, with us seeking God, looking for him. Where are you? I got to see you. I got to see you. I got to feel you. You know, you can see in the spirit. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. Do you know you can see in the spirit? You can hear God in the spirit. I, people say, what do you mean? God talks to you in the ear. You can hear him in spirit. And when God sees you, talks to you, you say, son, I have something for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Sometimes God is telling you, are you ready? And you say, I'm not ready. What? We're never going to be ready. That's the biggest excuse we put to God. I ain't ready to accept Jesus. I ain't ready. The disciples weren't ready. Jesus was not ready to be crucified. He cried out. Say, Father, take it. He even went to the mountain. Father, really? I got to go through this? Yeah. Really, sometimes you got to go through a process. You have to go through this process because it's God wants to show you something through that process. And it's always the same process until you will overcome that process. You will not go to the next step. Why are you still in the second step? You try to go to the third step, but you can't overcome that process as God is showing you. The same process that instead of putting you up, it's putting you down. It's putting you down further than God because you have to seek that revival. Father, I'm going to break this process. You're showing me this. Okay, I have to forgive. Okay, I have to fast more. I have to be there. And you start going uphill. Stop going down here. You want to go down here looking at God and drawing away. And God said, no, go up here. Look at me. Get closer. And the closer you get, you see him bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know why you see God small? Because you're too far away from him. The farther you are from him, you're going to see him small. Your natural eye is going to see him small. And God is telling you, run to me. Climb, climb. Why you stop when you climb? There's a big rock in the way. Overcome that rock. Move it. Do anything. Do the impossible. Do it with prayer. Do it with me. Do it with the Holy Spirit. Move that rock. Move that rock. The thing is, you want me to move that rock, and you don't want to do nothing. We want God to help us, but we want to be standing by. Okay, you take care of that, God. All right, you got this? Oh, you got this? You got this? All right. All right. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to fall again in the same thing. Because you want God to do the things by himself. He needs you. That's why you are a soldier. That's why you are a son of God. Oh, my God. You got to understand parents. Kids hit parents. When you're at home, your kids helps the parents to do stuff in the home. God needs you to do stuff. To do something here in heaven. He can't do it by himself. He needs you to step up and do what you got to do. He needs you to step up and say, Father, I need this awakening. Well, you want God to do the whole job. You do it for me. I'll be here. And God said, no, together, together. That's a relationship with son, father, together, together. God wants you together. God wants you to do it. What are you waiting for? Let me say it again. What are you waiting for? for. Let me keep reading because I'm on fire right now. Revival is not born in the flesh. You heard that? Woo. Revival is not born in the flesh. It is not born in your emotion, but it's born in your spirit. 
So a rack of ribs and some fries, not bring you revival. Food will not feed your spirit. Nothing natural will not fill your spirit. Your body won't be full with a good plate of food. Yeah, it might revival your body to go to sleep because you're tired because you're full of food, right? <laughs> but it says, but it's born in the spirit of God. It is born with him. You know how? what the spirit just gave me right now to go into a revival you need to go into labor you need to go into labor pain the thing is you stay in labor you stay in pain you don't want to die to yourself you don't want to give it to the Lord and the Lord is telling you whoa you have to go through pain sometimes. He don't want you in pain, but sometimes we need to go through this process. Like in 2019, really, Father? I have served you since 2008. I came back. Why is this going? And Father told me, you need to go to labor. And something needs to be born. Something needs to be reborn. Something needs to be reborn in your life. Something needs to be reborn in your spirit. Something needs to be reborn in your family. Call your dad. Tell him he's you sorry. Call your mother. Tell him you're sorry. Call your uncle. Call your brother. Call whoever you need to call to break that cycle that is detaining you to have a revival of God. Amen? Just give a hand to the Lord. My hair is getting wet. Get my hair. Yeah. My hair is getting wet. One day I'm going to walk in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to glue that, Pastor Dave. I'm going to come more like a... Nah, I ain't going to do that. <laughs> three words for you guys. Three words for you. 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 Three words for me. Three words for all. Three words for you. Provoke a revival. You want a revival? Provoke it. You want a revival? Provoke it. How many times the devil doesn't provoke us? How many times he try to provoke us to get upset, to argue with your wife, to argue with somebody, to have a bad day? He provokes us all the time. But it's time to turn around that and provoke God to bring a revival. Revival is within your thoughts, the presence of the Holy Spirit. You have to keep it. It's through, I'm sorry, through the Holy Spirit. Revival is through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Through Him. Through Him. Your guidance. Uh, GPS, turn around, turn around. You're going the wrong way. The Holy Spirit is telling you this morning, turn around. You're going the wrong way. You're looking for your own revival. And God has said, I want to give you my revival. While you're waiting for that revival, and if it's already inside of you, why do you are waiting for that revival? It's already inside of you. Inside of you. I remember one time at work, my boss, she had me, oh my God. And I started getting depressed. I started getting frustrated. And I went to the restroom and I said, Father, I need a revival. I need to step out this restroom and not grab her by the neck. <laughs> you say that? And there's a moment I remember when I used to work in the office. I'm not an office guy, but I try. And I walked in the bathroom. I said, Father, for the past three days, I identify the spirit. I've been frustrated. I've been stressed out because I'm letting my flesh take over. And I prayed, I said, Father, in this moment, this restroom, I need this revival. I need you. Father, I, I dry out. I cast out. You have to learn how to do your own deliverance. And you say, I, I said, Father, all these spirits need to live in my body. Before I leave this restroom here, I need to walk out this door full of your glory. I was asking for a revival in that moment. And when I walk out that restroom, my day went awesome. You got to understand, you decide how your day is going to be. Because other people that doesn't understand and try to make your day miserable. The other night, I had two drivers fighting. Nah, nah. I said, give me a second. What truck you drive? 
Your truck. What truck do you drive? Your truck. Why you want to drive his truck? You only can drive one truck. Why you put all this in your mind and you all night thinking about this? I say, I like to go to work to have fun, to enjoy myself, to be nice with everybody. And I said, when you go, when you at work, show the love of God. Don't go to work fighting with everybody. I've been six months in this job with Juan. He's the bash guy. We have have no arguments. You need me, I'm here. You need me, I'm there. And that's what you need to demonstrate to people, that if they need something, they can rely on you. Do you show people they can really rely on you if you need something? Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to go to Pastor Abadeo, man. He's always got this attitude. You think I'm going to go to him? He's always upset with his bald head all shiny. I ain't going to go to him. All right? And then, it because that's where he's reacting. He, that's what he's reflecting. Uh, what, what you are reflecting to others. If people see that revival in you, that people can walk straight at you and say, hey, Pastor Dave, hey, man, I need you to pray for me. I need to do this. And and, and this is this other thing, Pastor. People got some attitude. I, I need you to pray for me. Oh, you can't pray by yourself? You need to pray. No, come on. If he's asking for it because he really needs it, he is the person that God puts you in front. Pastor, I really need your prayer. But then you come with an answer. And, oh, why well, I need to pray for you? You don't know how to pray? That's where you cut it. That's where you break the anointing. That's in the moment when somebody comes to you, I need your help. Oh, feel happy. That person is relying on you on something. God sent them to you. And if you can't help, I can't help you. Let me find some other ways to help. When you're on a revival, anything can be possible. There will be a revival in your spirit. There will be a revival in your finances. There will be a revival in your health. There will be a revival in your relationship with your parents. There will be a revival with your relationship with anyone. But they got to see the revival in you. It's all here. Here. People see. And God knows when it's fake or not. But people will see you. Oh, man. Oh, man. You're always hugging people. You're always saying hi. What, what are you showing to others? And it says, okay, we're almost there. Let me read this. You will see how the revival is manifest through worship, fasting, prayer. It's time to rise up and cause a revival in your life. It is time. It is time to do this. Wake up. Wake up that passion that sleeps in you. Get up because revival is here. It's coming. It's right now. Revival is in the now. It's not yesterday. It's not tomorrow. Revival is now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. There is a transition. They said, what happens when there is a revival? There is a transition to the to the supernatural transition transformation there's a transformation in you there's something different you can walk when you, you know where you at you can walk with your straight straight you got that confidence that God is with you you got that revival you're looking straight up like yeah yeah um um I forgot his name he walks like that straight up bang bang I like how you walk straight bang you know what? But people walking head down, just thinking, man, they're lost. Hey, man, God bless you, man. You doing good? Yeah, I'm doing bad. Yeah, yeah. When you have the authority of God, you can see it in people the way they, they, they move their body. Standing there. God bless you. Are they good? They're on their face. Because you know where you're standing. You have that authority. It's not saying you, you, you try to threat people. But they, just, they, just, they can see it in you. You're standing straight. Boom, belly out like me and you. Stand straight. Stand straight. Stand firm. Stand. Don't, don't, don't look at the enemy. Stand straight. What's up? What you want? Huh? Just like that. Stand straight, enemy. What you want? You ain't gonna attack me. You sure? You got the guts to come to me? Face him. You have to face the enemy. Face him. Look at him. Say, you really? I'm a son. I know my identity. You sure you're going to come? I'm full of revival. You really want to come to me? 
The thing is, you're scared to face him. You're scared. His name is always in your mouth. The devil, devil, devil. Stop mentioning him. Mention God's stamp face. Tell him, I am a soldier of God. I've done it myself. I'll say, hmm, you think you're going to try? You think you're going to try to come to me? Church, please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Who can say hallelujah? Yeah, because it's almost done. I know that. <laughs> hey, church. Listen carefully, church. There is no time to waste anymore. Look what's going on out there. Look what's going on out there. Are you ready? Because the things in the Bible needs to be fulfilled so Jesus can come. And honestly, are you ready to be attacked? Are you ready to be because you serve the Lord? Are you ready to give your life for Christ? I just gave it. I'll give the whole thing. Do you really surrender because it's not to put fear. Things need to happen. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Do you have that revival of Jesus in you, of the Holy Spirit? Because they start attacking, then they're going to come against the church. Now you go anywhere, talk about Jesus, people get offended. But you talk about pornography, you talk about other stuff, nobody complains. But you talk about the truth, you talk about Jesus, now it's an offense. You can't even say, God bless you anywhere. You can't even do a prayer in a restaurant, everybody's looking mad at you. But if you come in cursing out in a restaurant, saying bad words, nobody complains about it. But if you sit down and talk about Jesus, people will start complaining. This is the time that we are living. Don't be embarrassed about God. God is not embarrassed about you. Jesus is not embarrassed about you. Jesus wants to move you forward. He wants you to be strong. Let me tell you something. The enemy can touch my body. He will not touch my soul and my spirit. Believe me. He can try to kill me, but my soul needs to go to the right place. You have to stand up and face him. You have to stand up and keep praying. You have to stand up and provoke and keep that revival that is in you. And you have to believe in him. Come on, I want some worship. I want some worship. Hallelujah. There are three things, three dimensions of the supernatural. To maintain that revival, you got to have faith, you got to have anointing, and you got to be in the glory of God. Why? Listen carefully. Why you haven't filled that revival? Your lamp doesn't have oil. And the oil represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You represent a lamp. And I'm asking this question to you this morning. As a lamp of God, do you have enough oil to light the way, the path of Jesus in your life? Do you have that oil full up, not even halfway, not even down? Is your oil up to full? Because God wants to bless you this day. You got to have your faith activated. You have to have that anointing. And when you have the anointing of God, you can step into the glory of God. And he wants to bless you this day. I want more of you. I want more of you. I need more of you. Come on, you. close your eyes. I need more of you. Come in. I can't me. give you a revival. Come in. I can't give you my, my revival. Jesus. You have to have your own revival. Come on, tell him, tell him, tell him. I want more of you. I want more of you. I need more of you. I need more of you. Come and meet me here. Come and meet me here. Jesus. Come on, open up your arms, come on.
God, you want something. I want you, Father. I want more from your spirit. I want more from you, Father. I ain't waiting anymore. Today is the day to receive my revival. Oh, Roboshe. I want more from you. Come and meet me here. Come and meet me here, Jesus. I want more of you. I want more of you. I need more of you. I need more of you. Come and meet me here. Come and meet me here, Jesus. Listen carefully. I'm going to open the altar. I like this is the moment where you do a call and the enemy's like, bam, 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 don't go there. You are here this morning because you're brave. You beat tiredness, you beat frustration, you beat your pillow this morning, your bed. You should have stayed home, right? You had an hour less sleep, but you're here. Because you're here this morning, you have provoked the Lord to say, I'm here to give you your revival. But there's something that you need to do. There's something that you need to do if you want to have a new experience with God. You need to walk to the altar. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. If you need God, you need God. You know, you already have Jesus. You already have a relationship with God. But you say, God, I want this revival. I want something different. I'm tired of the way I'm leaving. I want to come and I want to experiment your revival. And I thought it's abierto. Come on. If you need a revival, come to the front. If you need an awakening, come to the front. The Lord is about to do something. Come on. I need more of you. Come and meet me here. Come and meet me here, Jesus. Oh, Rick, I want you to close your eyes. I want more of you. I want more of you. I need more of you. I need more of you. Come and meet me here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Have that connection with the Lord. Say that to soul, say that to soul. Conectate. Don't look at me. Don't let me help me. I can't give you nothing. Come on. Come on. Have that encounter. I need more of you. Come on, guys. Come and meet me Come and meet me Jesus. I want more of you. I want more of you. Come on. I need more of you. I need more of you. Come and meet me Listen carefully. I want you to look at me very quick. To have a revival, you need the anointing of God. And the oil represents anointing. If your lamp is empty, you try to light it up, there's no oil. So you can't see where God wants to take you. When you don't have anointing, you're blind. You're walking with your emotions. You like you're walking with your hurt, with your feelings, and, and, and you can't see because there's no oil. You can't light up your, your your lamp to see where I need to go. And the oil will show you where you need to step, will show you the path, will show you where you need to go. I want you to put your hands like this. Stick your hands out. Because I want to put some oil in you. I want to put some oil in you. Come on, sing, 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 sing. I want more, I want more, I want more. Put your hands together. I want more of you. I want more of you. I need more of you. Close your eyes. I need more of you. Here comes. Come and meet me here. Come and meet me here. Jesus. I want more of you. I want more of you. I need more of you. I need more of you. Come and meet me here. Come and meet me here. Jesus. I want more of you. I want more of you. 
Hallelujah. Let's give a hand to the Lord. Hallelujah. I got the announcement. Where's my phone? Hey, my phone. Give me my phone. Listen carefully because we got to go. Remember, the revival is in you. I didn't, I didn't hear no amen on this. Looked like I preached to the chairs today. Let me say it again. Remember, the revival is in you. Amen. Question. If there's someone here this morning that haven't received the Lord in their life, Jesus Christ. I did it many years ago. I came back to him in 2008. And God has transformed my life. That I've been through battles. Yeah, that's life. That's going to be. But I'm going to tell you, the only solution is not money. Solution is not medication. Solution is Jesus Christ. And if you're that person in this morning that needs Jesus in your heart, I want you to lift up your hands if you need Jesus. Come on. Come on to the front. God bless you. Whoever lift up your hands. Come to the front, Papa Vente. You need Jesus, come to the front. Hallelujah. Come on, guys. Celebrate. That's a revival. You got to understand, that's a revival right there. There you go. Hallelujah. Pastor Dave, can you pray with him while I do the announcement? Honey, can you pray for her? There you go. Honey, pray for her. While they pray for them, because there's a feast in heaven right now, this is a revival right here. You got to understand, this is a revival. This is a revival. And while they pray, I'm going to tell you guys, Monday the 20th through the 24th here at church, our apostle needs our help. They're going to change the roof. They got to come. They need to move the chairs. They're going to be work here at church. I don't know. This is my church. This is your church too? So between the 20th to the 24th this month, the apostle need you here early in the morning. I don't know what time. They're going to set up a time. They need help here at church. You see outside there's been a plastic. There's leaking. They got to fix the roof. So they need people to remove chairs and help your church. Amen. All your offerings. Listen, listen, listen. All your tithes and offering is in, in this building. Amen. So you have invest here with your prayers, with everything. So I want you to come here. At, 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 it's at 9 o'clock a.m. Amen. So Wednesday night, we got the, um, the English service. Everybody that speaks English, you want to come Wednesday night. All the English um, service people are here Wednesday night. It's Wednesday of, of worship. So I want you to come here every Wednesday. Friday, we got the youth service. We have Houses of Peace Wednesday. What else I'm missing, Pastor? I read your stuff already. Here you go. I read yours already. Good, good. So, so, so come, enjoy yourself. We have, um, remember, we have the, 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 the school. Let me see. Supernatural Evangelism Saturday at, at 9 a.m., right? If you want to evangelize with Pastor Roberto, come. It's an amazing thing to go evangelize. 9 o'clock. Let me see what else. The meeting, uh, let me see, March 24 at 7.30, men's meeting. We have a men's meeting March 24 and March 23. Let me see right here. Uh, business classes. Amen? So we have a bunch of things to equip you. Enroll yourself at school here to, to university. I want you to lift up your hand. Let's pray. There's a many announcements here. Business school. Lift up your hand and let's pray. Let's celebrate. We just had a revival at church with these two lives. Let's give a hand to the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you what you have done. Thank you for this service. Bless us all. Enjoy the rest of the day. God bless you. God bless you.